Trattoria de Cesare is known for its real, authentic, delicious, home-style Roman cooking. We're gonna have some dishes that you may have heard of, cacio e pepe, pasta carbonara, and then tripa, which is a Roman specialty. That's the stomach of the cow, which is stewed and made nice and tender and delicious. La cucina tradizionale è la tradizione della tua casa e poi ho la tradizione della mia casa. Io la signora che abita di sopra ha la sua tradizione. Quindi la nostra cucina tradizionale, soprattutto in una città grande come Roma, è molto ampia, è molto varia, non è mai uguale. La carbonara che faccio io non è mai uguale a quella che fa un, un, un ristorante vicino a me. L'interpretazione è, è personale, no? È molto legata ai ricordi eh, di infanzia, ai ricordi di quando io ero bambino, mangiavo la carbonara in un certo modo e quando la cucino faccio in base al, al, al mio ricordo del gusto di come la mangiavo quando ero, quando ero bambino. Perché il formaggio io sono... mi piace tantissimo il formaggio, ci sono cresciuto col formaggio. Il pecorino ha un sapore, un sale quasi che mi ricorda il mare e il pepe ha un'aromaticità che mi ricorda i grandi vini. Quindi mangiare cacio e pepe, secondo me c'è una, una fusione aromatica incredibile. È un piatto che a me piace moltissimo. Allora, ecco il cacio e pepe. Grande. Cacio e pepe? <laughs> sì. Pasta carbonara? Sì. And then some of the tripa, some of the cow stomach. Exactly, yeah. So, in your cookbook tasting room, you go through a lot of the Roman culinary traditions and mm -hmm. history. What are sort of the basics of Roman cuisine and what are the distinctive uh, aspects of Roman food? Roman cuisine or the cucina romana is defined by a series of ingredients that are typical of the city, mm -hmm. a series of cooking techniques, and a litany of recipes. So you think like pecorino and lamb, like sheep type things. Sheepy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Organs, okay. wild things, misticans and chicoria, weeds that grow spontaneously, artichokes. Mm. And then, you know, the pasta dishes that have emerged in the 20th century, carbonara, cacio e pepe, those now define the cuisine as well. This is a pretty juicy cacio e pepe. Some of them are super, like, dry and tight. Mm. And this one, I want to incorporate some of that, like, liquidy sauce at the bottom. Oh, nice. He also put a lot of grated pecorino on top of it, so I want to get that in the mix, too. Which I love. Coming through. Thank you, grazie. There you go. This is super good. The fresh black pepper comes through so clearly and mm -hmm. so sharply. Mm. Tell me what else is in this cacio e pepe. Pasta, black pepper, pecorino romano, and water. Is cacio e pepe an old dish? The sort of anecdotal evidence that we have for it is that it was the sort of like mac and cheese of the early 20th century okay. when taverns would have to keep their diners sober, but want to keep them drinking. Now it's fully incorporated and adopted onto trattoria menus, and it's become one of the really iconic dishes of the city. And it's a, you know, about 100 years old by most accounts. Hook me up with some of that carbonara, man. Yes, thank you, that's perfect. Ooh, look at that guanciale. It looks good, I'm gonna eat it. I'm going for the cacho. Mm. Oh man, that's some good ass carbonara. For all of the ostensible sort of heaviness, the egg, the pork, the cheese, it doesn't feel like it's weighing you down. Well, I mean, that's one thing about Roman food that a lot of visitors learn when they come here. In Rome, we judge food based on how digestible it is, how light it feels, even if its ingredients are theoretically like super fatty. Let's have a little bite of this tripe, by the way. So this is cow stomach. Okay, nice grounded, awful flavor. Mm -hmm. The mint is, is nice. What you get is like a lot of bright acidity from the tomato sauce that's sort of like mellowed with the pecorino. So good. Rome for millennia was a place where many peasants had to eat and they ate every part of every animal. So that custom still survives today. I, we don't eat everything to the same extent that we used to. Like, if I go to my butcher, I don't have to pay for sheep's heads and brains. They just give oh, them away. There's oh, not really? demand. Okay. But there are definitely pork cuts and organs that are certainly part of home cooking and definitely restaurant cooking, and tripe is one of them. What Rome is, is a city that brands itself as like authentic. 
and indigenous, but it is the product of this like wonderful contamination of the foods and techniques and ingredients of shepherds from Abruzzo and Sardinia and laborers from Campania and Sicily and Calabria. There's no reason that Rome should be trapped in a peasant culture in an impoverished place. Absolutely. It's a city that evolves just like any other. My understanding is that these pasta dishes, while they look fabulous and they taste amazing, they're affordable, they're for the people. It's totally. not something that's out of reach for, for your average citizen. No, I mean, in New York or Los Angeles, you would pay sometimes $30 for cacio e pepe, mm -hmm. and it's unusual to find cacio e pepe for more than 10 or 12 euros, so uber affordable, especially for the quantity of pasta and the quality of ingredients. The more affordable, approachable dishes of a given place give you better insight into a city and into the people and into the culture, then it's fine dining. Sure. Oh, yeah. And I maintain that. And I, I think that that's especially true in Italy. That I concur. And what's really special about this place in particular is that they're using top-notch ingredients. Everything is really thoughtful. The chef Leonardo is so committed to making, like, comfort food. Mm and he's unpretentious, but he also, like he's serving things that are super affordable, but with linens on the table. The service is attentive, and the wine list is insanely cheap. With all of these sort of like subtle service considerations that would be absent in like a more rustic trattoria. Katie Parla, author, tour giver, yeah. Rome dweller. Rome dweller, yeah. Website haver. Yeah. KatieParler.com. Thank you for everything. This is a such delight. a delicious oh my meal. God. Thanks for coming to Rome. Yeah. Want to drink more wine? I got more wine. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Dining on a Dime from Trattoria de Cesare in the Genicolense. Genicolense neighborhood of Rome. If you'd like to watch more, please click here. Just be paused. <laughs>